cliff is like the rocks beneath. Harry, I am Heathcliff. He's always, always in my mind. It's Sunny. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm actually really excited for this video. I have been wanting to do this for so long. If you're new here and you haven't seen my other video where I read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen for the first time, completely annotated it, brought you guys along with me and showed you guys all my annotations. You can go watch that video. I wanted to do it for another book, but this time it's not going to be a Jane Austen book, even though I do need to do the other Jane Austen novels and I will. Don't worry. I always say the same thing, which is I can't go the... There's a freaking fly. I can't go the rest of my life without ever experiencing a catastrophic love. Like I have to experience it at least once in my lifetime before I die. Like I always say that and they're always like, please Sunny, don't go out trying to find a catastrophic love. It is in fact catastrophic. And I'm like, no, I don't care. I want to experience it just once. Hence this book, the catastrophic love book to trump all catastrophic love books. Heathcliff is a foundling adopted and raised as one of the Earnshaw children. With this act of charity, the seeds of ardent love and jealousy are planted. Catherine Earnshaw becomes devoted to Heathcliff while her brother, Hindley, always views him as a rival for Wuthering Heights. Today marks the day that I start reading Wuthering Heights. I'm about to feel like Bella Thorne right now. Did I say Bella Thorne? <laughs> I meant Bella Swan. Bella, where the hell have you been, Luke? I do, in fact, do this to my books. Well, I started off by writing my thoughts. I just want to experience a catastrophic love once in my life. And so it begins. Okay, so quickly, just before I leave, recently got a new phone after retiring my iPhone 8 that I had. I think it was five years old, that phone. And I got the iPhone 14 Pro. Obviously, I want to make sure that I take good care of it with the case and everything. So I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Casetify. Casetify is the world's most popular tech accessory brand known for their protective phone cases and global collaborations. I love Casetify. Look at these. They've recently introduced their most protective case yet, which is the bounce case. Here, hopefully you can see in this example, but you see the expanded corners. It just lets your case simply bounce if you ever just drop it. And fun fact about me, that I'm sure comes as no surprise to anyone, is that I'm like the most clumsiest person I've ever met in my life. I drop things so easily. Oh my gosh, I'm so clumsy. So this is such a good option for someone like me. It's up to 21.3 feet drop proof with new EcoShock impact absorption technology. So you can drop it from 21.3 feet and it will be fine. So I am going to do the drop test. This is what my phone looks like. I'm kind of nervous. This is what my phone looks like. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> okay, my roommates are going to be jump scared. I don't think I saw that, but it really did bounce. And it's perfect. Look at that. Amazing. Plus, there's over 2,000 prints to choose from, which is one of my favorite things about Caseify is that they collaborate with a lot of artists. And I love art so much, so I find it so cool. So their ultimate goal is to bring you protection while still being sleek and stylish because it's so protective, but it's like super, super slim and not that bulky. This is one of the ones that I got. And around it, it says, for the good days ahead. And I just love that message. It also has the MagSafe thing on the back. So that's a print case, but you can also get just the blank cases. This one is a clear case. And this one is the black translucent case. You can get different colors on the cases too. So Caseify sent me this one to show you guys. The green one there's also a purple one and a, oh my gosh a purple one and a pink one um which looked like i found a little bit scary when i first saw it i was like kind of vibing with it after a little bit because i'm the sign of the snake zodiac sign and there's customization options so this is just a clear case that i got and i customized it just with my name my friend saw this and she thought it said hummus which i thought was funny but can't wait to put like polaroids and stuff in this those are the five cases that caseify sent me so thank you so much they also sent me accessories which is super fun so the first one is a phone strap you can strap it onto your phone carry your phone around and then they also sent me a rainbow charm where they're all over pinterest so they sent me this one too which is rainbow which i thought is very pretty so you can shop for those on their website as well iphone 14 cases have been added to the website okay so since i'm taking my phone on one of its first outings i definitely want to put one of the bounce cases on to protect it i think i'm gonna go with this one Ta-da! This is what it looks like. Oh my gosh, I think it's so pretty. So if you're interested in checking out Caseify, you can use my link for a 15% discount. So thank you again to Caseify for sponsoring this video. I'm about to go to campus now to take you along with me to continue reading my book. You know, the first thing that I have to do, you already know. That's right, it's to find a Spotify playlist to listen to. I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, so I just finished the first three chapters of this book. I feel like we still haven't gotten to like the meat of the story. I feel like it's giving like story within a story because it's the perspective of this random man named Mr. Lockwood. And he's just there to like live at this estate that's like hard to pronounce. And his landlord is Mr. Heathcliff as like a 40 year old man. The manor that Mr. Heathcliff lives at is Withering Heights. And I learned that withering is actually like the adjective. It being really, really, really windy. Anyway, we meet Mr. Heathcliff and he is like giving nothing girl. He like is not emotional, does not display feelings. Also, I said I can't help but imagine Heathcliff as 
Heath Ledger. It's definitely just because of the name. I'm like wondering what happened at Withering Heights like 25 years ago that has just made everybody so jaded and rude or treating Mr. Lockwood terribly and being weird and mysterious and what? Who did this to you? The maid there makes him stay in this room and she's like, oh, it's like a forbidden room. It turns out it's because I think it was Catherine Earnshaw's room. Her name is like scrawled everywhere. Catherine Earnshaw, Catherine Heathcliff, Catherine Linton. And I'm like, who is Linton? And she has this whole library where she's like written inside every single book and like keeps journals and stuff. H and I are going to our bell. We took our initiatory step this evening. What does that mean? Is this gonna be a forbidden love story? Because I'm kind of here for that. Mr. Lockwood that night has like this nightmare. And Catherine Earnshaw's ghost comes and it's so terrifying and graphic for no reason. Ghostly hand. I'm like imagining that scary hand from diagonally. This book is wild already. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's 7.40 even though it seems like it's literally midnight. What a scam because of daylight savings. It literally, the sun starts setting at 4 p.m. I feel like we're getting more about the politics about this family and like the background. Father went on a trip somewhere and then when he came back, he brought a baby, which was Heathcliff. I don't know, abandoned on the street or something. Everyone's like jealous of him because their father likes Heathcliff. Look at this, I have candles lit and everything. I'm about to lie here. Candle completely burned out. Oh, I only have two more left. <gasps> only one more. Just finished chapter nine, so I'm on chapter 10 now. We finally got the story about like what happened in Heathcliff and Catherine's like childhood. Now this is a catastrophic, all-consuming love. I feel like it's pretty widely accepted that Heathcliff is like not quite. He's like some kind of spice, but I feel like there's like speculation probably out there on the internet. He's like always described to be like dark skin. Reading this, I was not appreciating all of the weird, subtle racism that was in this book because a white woman was writing it in like the 1800s. So I'm like this entire landscape is literally a disaster just the way that the moors is like described i feel like i need to like actually i'm actually gonna try to like find what it looks like because i'm reading about this i'm like surely no place on earth is like as terrible and ravenous as like the way that the moors are being described why is it like every time they leave the house like people almost die like falling down and snapping their neck okay well it looks like it's giving like and it's always storming like why is it always storming why are people always like being bitten and bleeding and anyway it's just stressful stressful to read about freaking hinley locked them out and they were just out there naked and afraid in the moors and of course Catherine got injured because she got bit by a dog and then she had to spend like time with the Lintons and that's when she met the son Edgar Linton that is the Linton that she marries just listen to the stuff that Heathcliff says about her she's so immeasurably superior to them to everybody on earth is she not Nellie and then Nellie who is like the servant she says you are incurable Heathcliff it was only that you looked odd if you wash your face and brush your hair it will be all right but you are so dirty and he says I shall be as dirty as I please I like to be dirty and I will be dirty and I'm like I feel like this has weird racial undertones to it tingling my spidey senses he literally says i wish i had light hair and fair skin and was dressed and behaved as well and had a chance of being as rich as he will be i feel like this is like an important turning point it's gonna be in the book where he says i'm trying to settle how i shall pay hinley back i don't care how long i wait if i can only do it at last i hope he will not die before i do i'm like what? What are you gonna do? You sound pretty unhinged. You need to stop that right now, Heathcliff. There's nothing I do better than revenge. It's giving me up. Literally, he says, I only wish I knew the best way. Let me alone and I'll plan it out. While I'm thinking of that, I don't feel pain. Everyone here is a psychopath. What is in the water at Withering Heights? I could not half tell what an infernal house we had. Literally, that's what the maid said. The closest that we got to Heathcliff ever like confessing his love. He points to the calendar and he's like, do you see the day? The crosses are for all the evenings you spend with the Linton and the dots is for every day that you spend with me. Do you see that I marked every day? And she's like, yeah, very foolish as if I took notice. Where's the sense in that? And he says to show that I do take notice. Don't fumble the bag for us, Catherine. And then chapter nine is the actual spicy chapter where Edgar proposes to her and she accepts the marriage proposal, but then she comes crying to Nellie the maid about her feelings for Edgar versus her feelings for Heathcliff. And this is like the famous quote that I've seen everywhere. And I didn't know that it was from this book. She says, whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. Not because he's handsome, some Nelly, but because he's more myself than I am. Tell me that that's not the makings of a toxic, catastrophic relationship. It literally is. I literally just woke up. Oh my god. Um, sorry, I know I look terrible. I'm starting chapter two of volume two of this book and Catherine just 
died. Literally, Catherine just died after in the last chapter. Let me show you. I have never seen such a heated argument between two characters before. Heathcliff and Catherine are like going at each other because they love each other so much. She's like, you and Edgar both broke my heart. Like, you guys almost made me die. Heathcliff is like, you can't die. If you die, I die. And it's just sucks. But she sees his hair and kept him down. I'm like, sheesh, on his knees. I'm not wishing a greater torment than I have Heathcliff. I only wish us never to be parted. Come here and kneel down again. She bent around to look at him. He would not permitted turning abruptly he walked to the fireplace where he stood silent with his back towards us heathcliff really never shows any of his emotions like and the one thing that can like get his emotions out of control is his love for catherine like in this moment and even then he's like not letting anyone see it like he won't let her see his face and he'll like turn his back towards her he is a really taking i hate everyone in the world but you to like the next level i feel like i'm scared to see what's gonna happen are you joking he's gonna tear everyone to shreds this man anyway this is when catherine died our narrator the servant has to be the one to tell heathcliff and i was like like, oh, I'm scared for this. And look at this whole thing that Heathcliff says. He says, Catherine Earnshaw, may you not rest as long as I'm living. You said I killed you. Haunt me then. The murder do haunt their murderers. I believe I know that ghosts have wandered on earth. Be with me always. Take any form. Drive me mad. Only do not leave me in the abyss where I cannot find you. Oh God, it is inutterable. I cannot live without my life. I cannot live without my soul. Hinley is talking crazy a little bit. He's literally about to murder Heathcliff. I don't even know what's gonna happen, but oh my God. What? Is he gonna shoot him? Oh, there was an attempted murder. There's a gunshot and a knife and now there's blood okay i'm about to start chapter four now just finished chapter three and my head is spinning because people keep dying left and right just out of sickness or age or whatever heathcliff do be sounding like a tyrant but i can't tell if i want to be rooting for him or not like why is he so scary but then a part of me is like as he should his wife isabella went and had a child he obviously is not allowed to see the child but then he says but i'll have it when i want it they may reckon on that and then isabella ended up dying and then henley also ended up dying people are just dying and he is just like taking these children like, and now he is the owner of withering heights because hindley died with so much debt to heathcliff so now heathcliff owns withering heights and he's making hindley's son like a servant to the house pretty much even though he's like hindley's son in the beginning he is literally reducing hindley's son to like what he was when he was growing up at withering heights i'm on chapter eight of volume two i think that's like chapter 21 of the entire book we're following like the younger generation of kids now now that like the old people are like mostly gone or they're like sick or ailing except for heathcliff um and it's kind of a mess because the kids are like falling in love with each other or they're trying to okay heathcliff is trying to get catherine's daughter to marry his son but obviously catherine's husband doesn't want that anyway it's just like such a big mess the intergenerational trauma that started with the heathcliffs and the linton so that is kind of a mess and i kind of don't care about like the little kids anymore also i'm like so confused perpetually confused about how the women in these books are like falling in love with the men in these books the men are like giving nothing you know like what part of heathcliff did isabella like fall in love with and why is like catherine's daughter also named catherine but kathy for short why is she falling in love with isabella's son when he is literally so unattractive to me like i'm so sorry he's literally so unattractive complains all the time he's like whiny he's like lazy he just sits there and like looks pretty and they're mean everyone here is mean it's freezing in our house my fingers are literally frozen i can't type properly and i ran out of candles i literally burned my last candle down until the wick was in smithereens trusty headphones you guys already know the drill how am i gonna write my hands are freezing i feel like i probably look like the exact same but it's actually the next day and i'm determined to finish this book quite honestly all the characters who are left in this book i pretty much hate them slash they give me the ick i'm confused okay we're starting chapter 12 guys oh there's literally psychopath behavior happening i just finished chapter 13 i'm starting chapter 14 now heathcliff is literally making kathy marry his frail ailing weak dying son and literally has locked kathy and the maid nelly inside of house and won't let them leave until she agrees to marry him and he's like threatening his son that they better marry otherwise something terrible is gonna happen to him okay so we're literally almost done the book now oh i look like a literal garce i mean his plan works they end up marrying because he literally locked them in a house together now kathy is a widow nelly the housekeeper says to lockwood like the only thing that will save her is a second marriage i feel like she is trying to get lockwood to 
to marry Catherine. Part of me was hoping that Kathy would like have a little thing with Hareton, who is Henley's son. He's like the second Heathcliff pretty much. Like I think Heathcliff is doling out punishment by like making Henley's son the new Heathcliff. Like he won't send him to school. He's the one who's considered like not civilized and not whatever, whatever now. But he's like the most interesting character to me, obviously, because I feel like Heathcliff is also the most interesting character. Always preferred the underdog character. I mean, full well saying that all of these marriages in my mind are quite illegal because literally everyone is blood related to each other. But anyway, but if we were going to have a little love thing, I feel like I wish it was with Hareton. That would have been way more interesting. There was this one scene, Hareton is like reading like an inscription. He saw one that said Hareton and he says to Kathy, look, I can read this name. But I don't know if he was like trying to like prove himself or like trying to impress Kathy or something. But I saw that and I was like, hmm, what's happening there? Guys, no way. So we had a little bit of a time jump. One girl teaching one boy how to read. Did I not call that? Are you joking? Oh my gosh, Emily Bronte. I want to open mouth kiss you. Also, Heathcliff died. Heathcliff died three months ago. Last chapter. Oh my gosh, guys, we did it. We finally finished. So much happened at the end of this book. It was actually insane. I think my favorite part of this book was a little bit of like a childhood, like a childhood enemies to lovers, childhood hate to love. That was like right at the end. I thought it was so cute. This part right here, because you guys know who I was rooting for. I had like a little, little secret hope that like it would be something with Hareton and turns out they did where Kathy like makes fun of Hareton and then she feels bad about it and so she's like trying to like become friends with him and a companion he cried when she hates me and does not think me fit to wipe her shoe and then Kathy goes it's not I who hate you it's you who hate me you hate me as much as Mr. Heathcliff does and more and then he's like that's not true you're the one who always you know makes fun of me and taunts me when I'm in the kitchen and then she's like well I didn't even think that you cared I was miserable and bitter at everybody which honestly makes sense to me because she was literally locked in this house and forced to marry someone she didn't want to marry after remaining an instant undecided she stooped and impressed on his cheek a gentle kiss and then she said well what should i have done ellen he wouldn't shake hands he wouldn't look i must show him some way that i like him and i want to be friends i'm like Okay. So the kiss convinced Hareton I cannot tell. He was very careful for some minutes that his face should not be seen. And when he did raise it, he was sadly puzzled where to turn his eyes. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. They're so cute. He's shy. He's shy. He cannot summon courage at first to utter a syllable in reply to her questioning look and her murmured petition. And then she goes, say you forgive me, Hareton. You can make me so happy by speaking that little word. He muttered something inaudible. And you'll be my friend, added Catherine interrogatively. He says, nay, you'll be ashamed of me every day of your life. And the more and more you know me, I cannot bide it. And she goes, so you won't be my friend. She said, smiling as sweet as honey and creeping close up and the enemies were thenceforth sworn allies ignore my bad it's uh, anyway it's a mess What a journey that was. That book took ages to read. I don't know why, but oh my gosh, my battery's about to die. Okay, my battery did in fact die, so I'm ending the video on my phone. Yeah, that's gonna be the end of this video. Thank you for joining me. Let me know if there are any other classics that you want to watch me read and annotate for the first time. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Follow me on all my socials. They'll all be linked in the description as always, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.